Locally in Boston, we are setting records like it's 2008 and we still have Tom Brady throwing to Randy Moss. Third and ten. Brady with time. Going back again to Moss. Touchdown Patriots. Welcome back to the last Greater Boston Housing Update for 2023. Before we get into the numbers, I want to start off a little bit differently and share something a little bit personal with you about this video. I really struggled to make it. At one point I sat for, I think, an hour and a half and I maybe wrote one paragraph and then I ended up deleting it because I just didn't like how it sounded. And the reason is I want to make these videos super, super valuable for you guys. I want to make them also kind of entertaining, but overall give you the best information. And my number one reason for that is because I see so much bull crap on YouTube from people who aren't realtors, don't live here locally in Massachusetts, honestly don't know what they're talking about, cherry picking data and then using it to strike fear in consumers' hearts. And it honestly pisses me off. So I wanna make these videos to tell you what's actually happening in the market so you have the most data and information in your hands to make the best decision possible for you and your family. I apologize for the lengthy intro. I'm passionate about this stuff because I've seen the impact that real estate can have on somebody's life. I've seen the impact it has on my life. And I want you guys to all benefit from that as well. So without further ado, in this video, we'll talk about a Shiller, CoreLogic, year-to-date home prices. We'll talk about how the city of Boston is doing, how the suburbs are doing. We'll go over forecasts for 24 and 25, and then we'll look at what you can expect for the next six weeks of the year and heading into January. Case Shiller, which is considered the gold standard real estate housing data and information, just came out with their August numbers. For the seventh straight month, home values increased. So from July, until August, they rose 2.6% on a national average. A certain uh, group of cities, including Boston, uh, is actually at record highs, and we're gonna touch on that later in the video. Year to date, the price index is actually up 5.6%, which again, if you look at the predictions that were being made last November, some people were saying that real estate is gonna be down 8, 10, 15, even 20%, and it's just completely the opposite case. Now, you'll see a trend that it's different depending on what region of the country you're in. But before we get to that, let's see if CoreLogic had the same results as K. Schiller. Now, CoreLogic has released their September numbers. They're a month ahead and they're showing a modest gain. But to me, what's more important is year over year, September 22 to 23, nationally, we're up 4.4%. But they don't see the slowing down. They're predicting 2.6% gain from September of 2023 to September of 2024. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows in every part of the country. The Midwest and the East Coast are really rising while the Mountain West area is kind of lagging behind a little bit. You have cities like Boston, Miami, New York, which are all at all-time highs versus cities like Phoenix, Vegas, Austin, Boise, which are down year over year. And honestly, that makes sense. The demand spiked for those cities so much during 2020, 2021, the first half of 2022, that it was unreasonable for them to maintain that pace of growth. Plus you have the return of workers back to the office and some of those people are being forced to move back to the cities that they originally moved from. And if that pendulum of demand versus supply starts to shift this way in some of those cities, you will see home values start to come down just slightly. So what about here in Boston? One of the best cities in the United States, at least in my opinion. But first, a quick reminder, I am a local realtor here from Caldwell Banker. If you wanna talk about your housing goals in more detail or have a question, all my contact information is in the description below. Please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to chat with you. Locally in Boston, we are setting records. Like it's 2008 and we still have Tom Brady throwing to Randy Moss. Third and 10, Brady with time. Going back again to Moss. Touchdown, Patriots! Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Right now, both average price per square foot in the city and median price per square foot are at all-time highs. If we take a look at Back Bay, one of the city's most expensive neighborhoods, it's also at record highs for average price per square foot and median price and setting a new record for all-time year-to-date sales volume. So you see there's a lot of activity going on. But the suburbs are doing fantastic as well. You have towns like Brookline, Newton, Lexington, Manchester by the sea. They're all currently at all-time highs. But how are prices continuing to rise despite the highest mortgage rates in over 23 years? Well, I think I have the answer. This article just came out showing the average age of both first-time homebuyers and repeat homebuyers. 
And both are on the rise. The average age for first-time homebuyer is 35, but the average age for a repeat homebuyer is 68 years old. And they are the ones that are winning and driving up these prices. And there's one reason, cash. Show me the money. Many of them have completely paid off their homes and are selling and then buying the new property in cash, or they have so much equity in the house that they're selling that again, they're able to purchase the new property entirely in cash. So the mortgage rates are not affecting them and they simply can buy the house if they want it and keeping the prices steady in many of these towns or again, making them increase. Will the trend continue? Well, it depends if you think that rates will stay elevated or if you think that this prediction by Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo is going to come true. Both are predicting rates to come down into the sixes in 2024, but then Wells Fargo has a pretty bullish prediction there. You think we'll be in the fives in 2025. And what both of them have in common, along with core logic, is that they all predict home prices to continue to appreciate. Here in the Northeast, specifically Massachusetts, I think the appreciation is going to be even higher than Wells Fargo and Goldman Sachs are predicting. It's because it's supply versus demand. It's the same thing we always talk about but it's very hard for us here in the greater Boston area to have a huge increase of supply. And the demand stays elevated. People still move here for jobs, for education, for the medical, for the culture, for the history, for the sports. Maybe not for the sports, but that's just the added bonus of living here. Uh, unfortunately, speaking of that demand, it is about to plummet for the next six weeks. We're sitting here in the middle of November, and this is what I call we're entering the dead zone for how many people are looking to buy a home. We have Thanksgiving and then Christmas or Hanukkah, or whatever holidays you celebrate. Either way, the holiday season, buyers are just not thinking about looking for a home. So what does that mean? Honestly, it is a fantastic opportunity for you to secure a property. Interest rates were at in the eights. They just dropped over half percent. And last I checked, the average rate is 7.4%. I know some lenders who are doing jumbo loans or arms or combination of both that are in the high sixes. The next six weeks is going to be the lowest competition as a home buyer for the entire year. And you have houses that have been sitting. Inventory has still been rising the last few weeks. If you've been looking for a while and haven't found anything, this is an awesome opportunity to look for homes, negotiate, get the price down, and keep all your contingencies. And then January 1st hits. And that's when, actually, if you're thinking of selling your home in 2024, you should really check out this video because the best time to sell is not when you think it is.